Hallelujah. Hey, thank you all for joining Rudy and me. We have turned what Rudy calls a steel door from the Old Testament into the New Testament. So one page. It's this wide. That one page. One time Rudy and I were back in the back of his restaurant and we were talking about something. Said, Don't you know that there's not an iron door between the New Testament and the Old Testament? You can read the Old Testament too. Something like that. That's where that comes from. So we're in Matthew chapter 1 and I have to confess that I have very often skipped the first 22 verses of Matthew chapter 1. Rudy and the commentary I'm reading have me intrigued with this passage. So by the way, it's the first 17 verses, not 22, sorry. Uh, Rudy has me intrigued, and we're not going to read you every name because half of them I can't pronounce, but we're going to pick up some big themes here. One of the themes are the numbers. So if you read through these verses, you'll find the number 14 coming up on different occasions. Why don't you comment on that number first of all, then we'll pick out some names. Well, one of the master images that the Bible is written in is two witnesses. Right. And that manifests itself in a lot of different places. Like yesterday when we were finishing up Malchai, the two witnesses at the end of time. Well, what does 14 mean? Right. Well, I believe me, I wondered about that a long time because it's not really one of the kingdom numbers that you would find so it's one of the one of the things that I brought to the Lord what are you talking about right two sevens it goes what he was talking about it was like a two two witnesses of seven which is a divine number yeah so uh, the interesting thing is is that when you when you when I go back and look at it you know you would think that 14 generations would always be the same amount of time. Right. But what we're, what we, because Matthew starts with Abraham, mm -hmm. Luke starts with Adam. Uh -huh. uh, but in this one, Abraham uh, is a thousand years after Noah. And really, the, uh, what, we're, what, what I believe what we're looking at is the preeminent sons of the fathers, uh -huh. which is kind of in tune with Jesus is the preeminent son of the father. Uh -huh. Okay, and so Isaac was born a thousand years after Noah, after the mm -hmm. flood. David is born of David uh, is the father of Solomon, which is a thousand years after that, which is the preeminent son of David, and the prophecies that from the root of Jesse get into this conversation because that's what was prophesied about 600 BC that there would be one from David but uh, almost but 500 years before that as Jacob was passing away he said that a star will arise out of Judah Mm -hmm. and the martial staff between his ankles will not be taken away. Mm -hmm. This is talking about Jesus as well. Right. And so we run through all of these names and most of us don't know much about these names. Right. And we really don't find out that the, that the name that actually makes the X the center of the cross is Zerubbabel. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was so important when we, re we were reading Zechariah that the people were coming back to the land. They didn't know who the high priest was going to be. They didn't know who the son of David that was going to sit on the throne was going to be. And God made it Zerubbabel. There you go. And so when we look at Mary's genealogy and John's ge genealogy, we find that Zerubbabel is the crosshairs of that, which it was prophesied 500 years prior. Come on. So I have a couple of thoughts here. One of them, just names. We start off in verse 2 with Abraham. That's, that's a highlight. Genesis chapter 2, God is going to bless Abraham, but he's going to bless the whole world through Abraham. But then you have verse 11, 
probably one of the lowest points in Jewish history, the deportation, the exile to Babylon. Uh, that's a low point. And obviously you have King David in there, high point. And then the biggest high point is the birth of Jesus. Come on. Yeah. Uh, let's no, go ahead. Well, let's, let's look at some of the women. All right. So you have Tamar, you have Rahab, and you have Ruth. It's interesting that in this list of luminaries, I mean, these are the big names of Israel, you have three women. Who was Tamar? Tamar is Judah's second wife or third wife, uh, of which she had children because the children before that had passed away since they had been killed. Okay. For which God is basically putting stepping stones in history so that we can follow it. Okay. Uh, the other woman uh, was the woman that took care of the spies as they were coming into Jericho. Right, right. Uh, and the next woman, Ruth, uh, was a Moabite. Right. And Boaz is actually one of the descendants of David that this is all through. And uh, I'm not so sure that they, all three, weren't Moabites. Yeah. So, just interesting that in a world where basically women were not mentioned, this women had so little status in that day, here are three women who are mentioned among the luminaries. And they may have been, at least some of them, Gentiles. For sure. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you look at you look at Judah and the line that came from him because of what Jacob had said about him. And yeah. then you look at uh, Rahab, that part of the wall didn't fall. Yeah. Uh, and the third one's escaping me right now. Ruth. Ruth. <clears throat> then you read the book of Ruth mm -hmm. and realize how righteous person that her mother and Ruth were, uh, even even during terrible circumstances. Uh, no matter where you go, I'm going with you. Yeah. The faithfulness of Ruth and then the blessing that Boaz noticed her. And one of one of the pillars in the in the temple was was the name of it was Boaz, and it's basically in my strength. Nice. Let me make one more comment, I'm gonna pray. These are all names. I can't pronounce half of them. God knows every one of these names. God is a personal God who deals with human beings. Let's not forget, he is not just a force. He is not something that's a part of our world system of some sort that's discovered by looking within ourselves. Okay, that's, that's new age kind of talk. He is a personal God who deals with people he, just as he has this list of people in his records, he has your name there. He has your name. He has my name there. We are a somebody to God. And there are billions of other people throughout history and today. God knows them all intimately. You know, I think I'm a best friend with God. But there's somebody in another part of the world who I, I don't even know, couldn't find where he lives on a map. And he thinks or she thinks they're the best friend of God. Praise God. Lord, thank you for your goodness and grace. Thank you for names. Thank you that we have our name in your list of people who love you and serve you. Please guide us and bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, thanks for joining us. Looking forward to Matthew. We got more to go. See you tomorrow.